Taste and Core is a dental restoration which is used to sufficiently restore a tooth morphology followed by future restoration such as a crown. When there is inadequate tooth available due to loss of tooth structure as a result of decay, fracture or other causes. Post and cores can be referred as one of the foundation restorations. Indications for placing a post and core. To retain restoration. The primary purpose of a post is to retain a core in a tooth with extensive loss of coronal tooth structure. To protect remaining tooth structure by uniform force distribution achieved by the post and rigidity for core which help the tooth to function effectively. Contraindications Post should not be placed when retention of core is not necessary and when protection of the remaining structure is not necessary. Example, anterior teeth with sound structure which need only resin or amalgam filling after root canal therapy. Post cannot be placed in a traumatically injured tooth, malformed tooth, severe curvature root and in cases where there is a need for further retreatment. Important principles for placing posts. Retention and resistance. Post retention refers to the ability of a post to resist vertical dislodging forces. Retention is influenced by the post's length, diameter and taper, the luting cement used and whether a post is active or passive. Increasing the length and diameter of the post can increase retention. Resistance refers to the ability of the post and tooth to withstand lateral and rotational forces. It is influenced by the remaining tooth structure, the post's length and rigidity, the presence of anti-rotation features and the presence of a ferrule. What is the proper length for a post? A wide range of recommendations have been made regarding post length, which includes the following. 1. The post length should equal the inciso cervical or occluso cervical dimension of the tooth. 2. The post should be longer than the crown. 3. The post should be one and one third the crown length. 4. The post should be half the root length. 5. The post should be two thirds the root length. 6. The post should be four fifths the root length. 7. The post should be terminated halfway between the crestal bone and root apex. 8. The post should be as long as possible without disturbing the apical. Failure mode. An important factor related to resistance is failure mode. All post systems have some percentage of clinical failure. However, some posts cause a higher percentage of failures that result in teeth that are non-restorable. For example, teeth restored with less rigid posts such as fiber posts, tend to have failures that are more likely to be restorable. The largest ideal diameter for a post is the diameter of the root at the most apical portion of the post space. The Ferrule Effect The Ferrule Effect is important to long-term success when a post is used. A ferrule is defined as a vertical band of tooth structure at the gingival aspect of a crown preparation. It adds some retention but primarily provides resistance form and enhances longevity, increases retention. Ferrule effect resists lateral forces, reinforces tooth at its external surface and helps dissipate occlusal forces. Lack of sufficient ferrule forces the post and core to accept high functional forces. 
preservation of tooth structure. Whenever possible, coronal and radical tooth structure should be conserved. In most cases, preparation of a post space should require minimal removal of additional radicular dentin beyond the requirements for root canal treatment. Further enlargement only weakens the root. Which root be chosen for post installation in multi-root teeth? Always select the longest, straightest and greatest circumferential diameter of the root to place the post. Secondly, select which root reduces the possibility of lateral or apical perforation and which root better distributes the stress due to occlusal loading, like the distal root of mandibular molar, the lateral root of maxillary molar. In situation of mesial or mandibular buccal maxillary, always use short post. In areas of the root where the greatest amount of coronal tooth structure has been lost, Adding a pin is better. Types of posts Posts are categorized in a number of different ways. They can be classified as active or passive, parallel or tapered, and by material composition. Posts can also be classified as A. 1. Custom Post 2. Prefabricated post. B. 1. Screw post. 2. Cemented post. Prefabricated post system can be classified into 1. Tapered post. A. A. Non threaded or smooth. B. Serrated. C. Threaded. 2. Parallel sided posts A. D. Non threaded or smooth B. E. Serrated C. F. Threaded Tapered post Advantages of tapered posts Conservation of tooth structure High strength and stiffness Disadvantages of tapered posts Low retention Longitudinal splitting of remaining root Recommended use of tapered posts Small circular canals or very tapered canals Not recommended for extremely flared canals Prefabricated posts Parallel sided posts Non-threaded or smooth Advantages Excellent clinical retention Minimal stress production within root Ease of placement and superior rating Disadvantages Precious material post expensive Corrosion of stainless steel Less conservative of truth structure Recommended use Small circular canals Prefabricated post, threaded posts. Advantages High retention. Disadvantages Stresses generated in canal may lead to fracture. Non conservative of coronal and radicular tooth structure. Recommended use Only when maximum retention is essential. Precaution Care to avoid fracture during seating. Prefabricated posts Carbon fiber posts Advantages Dentin bonding Easy removal Disadvantages Low strength and micro leakage Carbon color presents an aesthetic problem Recommended use Minimal missing tooth structure Uncertain endodontic prognosis of tooth Precautions not recommended for teeth under lateral load. Prefabricated post 
Zirconia Ceramic Posts Advantages Aesthetics and High Stiffness Disadvantages Uncertain Clinical Performances Recommended Use High Aesthetic Demands Prefabricated Post Woven Fiber Posts Advantages Aesthetics and Dentin Bonding Disadvantages Low Strength and Uncertain Clinical Performances Recommended Use High Aesthetic Demands Precautions Not Recommended for Teeth Under Lateral Load Custom Cast Post and Core Advantages Preservation of Maximum Tooth Structure The post is fabricated to fit the radicular space Provision of Anti-Rotational Properties Core Retention since core is an inherent part of the post. Less chances of vertical fractures during preparation. High strength. Disadvantages. Less stiff than wrought. Time-consuming, complex procedure. Recommended use. Elliptical canals and flared canals. Precautions. Care should be taken to remove nodule before try-in. During preparation, care should be taken to avoid root perforation in danger zones of molars. Commonly used posts are prefabricated posts. Prefabricated posts are typically made of stainless steel, nickel chromium alloy or titanium alloy. They are very rigid and with the exception of the titanium alloys, very strong. Because they are round, they offer little resistance to rotational forces. This is not a problem if adequate tooth structure remains. But if minimal tooth structure remains, anti-rotation features must be incorporated into the post preparation with slots or pins. A bonded material should be used for the core. Ceramic and Zirconium Posts One factor that has reduced the use of metal posts is aesthetics. Metal posts are visible through the more translucent all ceramic restorations and even with less translucent restorations may cause the marginal gingiva to appear dark. These concerns have led to the development of posts that are white and or translucent. Among the materials used for aesthetic posts are zirconium and other ceramic materials. Fiber posts. Carbon fiber posts gained popularity in the 1990s. Their main proposed advantage was that they were more flexible than metal posts and had approximately the same modulus of elasticity or stiffness as dentin. When bonded in place with resin cement, it was thought that forces would be distributed more evenly in the root, resulting in fewer root fractures. What is the proper post diameter? Post diameter must not exceed one-third the root diameter. Instruments used to prepare posts should be related in size to root dimensions to avoid excessive post diameters that lead to root perforation. Safe instrument diameters to use are 0.6 to 0.7 millimeters for small teeth such as mandibular incisors and 1 to 1.2 millimeters for large diameter roots such as the maxillary central incisor. Molar posts longer than 7 mm have an increased chance of perforations and therefore should be avoided even when using instruments of an appropriate diameter. Luting cements Any of the current luting cements can be used successfully with a post if proper principles are followed. The most common luting agents are zinc phosphate, resin, glass ionomer, and 
resin modified glass ionaba cements. Core materials. The purpose of the post is to retain the core, which in turn helps retain the crown. With cast post and cores, the core is formed on the post directly on the tooth or indirectly on a cast. The general shape and orientation of the core is developed during fabrication. Fabrication posts are used in combination with a restorative build-up material which is formed after cementation of the post. The choices are amalgam, composite resin or glass ionomer materials. Hello, I am Dr. Sujit Bapardikar. I am a prosthodontist by profession. Post and core today is an integral part of dental treatment. It's extremely important to save your natural teeth and post and core is one of the most important procedures to do so. Today, I'll in brief show you in a basic way how to execute a good post and core restoration in the anterior as well as the posterior teeth. An overview of armamentarium necessary for post and core procedure. These are the basic requirements for a post and core uh, procedure. And uh, according to the procedure, let's start from the basic requirements. We require uh, your uh, gates or piezo reamers, one, two, three, and a final one, according to the size and the shape of the post and core to be used. This is followed by a lenticular spiral to put your luting cement into the post space. To clean the canal, we require 35% phosphoric acid. You can also use EDTA. We require a good bonding agent, which is not a light cure bonding agent. We require a luting agent. Again, not a light cure, but a dual cure luting agent. We require a core material. We require various types of posts. Now these are fiber posts. These are metallic posts. These are also metallic posts. You require a mixing pan and spatula. And you require applicator tips. Besides this, you require your basic diagnostic instruments, your aerotor and your micromotors, your composite instruments, and of course the patient.